We are okay. recording and um, we should be good to go. So, Ron, Ron, are you there still? You can hear us okay? Yeah, I hear you. Okay, great. Um, okay, welcome everybody um, to the uh, SS TAC meeting for um, the most recent uh, net transit needs process. Um, this will be um, for 23-24 year. Um, we're just trying to get ahead of the game and so we shifted a little bit. Um, I'd like to go ahead and do some introductions. Um, you'll notice Victoria is not here today. Uh, she is officially on leave for maternity leave. So she will be um, doing that for a few months. And um, so I am going to drive the meeting today and uh, just ask that you would just bear with as, as we go through the process. Um, and, and we'll just plug along. I have my agenda here and uh, hopefully everybody's got that. So I will also do some screen sharing. So um, let's do that real quick here. And then we'll do some introductions. All right, I will share here. All right, can everybody see that screen? Yep. Okay, great. Okay, so um, so I'll just go down around down the list that I have. Um, my name's Amy. I am um, an assistant planner with the transit team, um, working with Victoria and Sarah and Andy, um, and so I'm just filling in for Victoria this time a little bit. Um, uh, Jay, do you want to go ahead? Just to let us know your name and what agency you're with. Sure, thanks. Uh, my name is Jay Coughlin. I'm with the Department of Employment and Social Services, the Housing and Homeless Branch. And okay. thanks for putting the meeting on. Okay. Andy? Uh, Andy Newsom, uh, Butte County Association of Governments, Beeline uh, Deputy Director. Okay, Ron? Um, I'm Ron Ullman of Oh, are you still there, Ron? Oh. Okay, we just, you cut out a little bit. Uh, Ron Ullman from Oroville. Okay. Is that? Great. Uh, Mary? Mary Newman, Deputy Director, Passages. Okay. Cheryl? Uh, hi, I'm Cheryl Massé, Director, Human Resources. Okay, and I believe David is next. Under user. Showing his user, David and uh, Diane. Uh, Michael. Michael Harding, uh, transportation broker for Ford on the Regional Center. Um, we care a lot, foundation as well. Great. And Tara. Hi, Tara Sullivan Haynes, director of Butte 211. Great. Okay, well, um, we sure appreciate everybody coming today to the meeting and um, uh, just hope that we have a productive time together today. Um, so the, the next item is the minutes from the uh, May 22nd meeting. Um, was there any comments or questions on those minutes? Okay, seeing none, um, we just need a motion to go ahead and approve those minutes from the May meeting and a second. Hi, this is Jay. I can go ahead and make a motion to approve the minutes as presented. Okay. I'll second it. And that was? Mary. Okay. All in favor, just say aye. You can unmute real quick. Aye. 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 Okay, any opposed? Okay. 
So we'll go ahead and put those minutes in as approved. Um, Next is our main topic, the unmet transit needs. Um, let me go ahead and pull that up real quick. Um, okay, and I'm just gonna read some notes here and then um, we'll have the opportunity to ask questions or make comments. Um, before we move forward with that. Um, so BCAG is required to prepare the unmet transit needs assessment each year um, as the administrator of TDA funds, Transportation Development Act funds for Butte County. Um, we must each year identify any unmet public transit needs that may exist in Butte County in order to receive state funding. If unmet transit needs are found, a further determination must be made as to whether those needs are reasonable to meet and all unmet transit needs that are reasonable to meet must be met before TDA funds are expended for non-transit uses such as streets and roads. <clears throat> there, how's that? <laughs> um, testimony was collected over a 30-day outreach period where the public could provide input via uh, mail, email, phone, <clears throat> as well as an online comment form to the, on the Beeline webpage. The outreach period culminated with a public hearing before the board, board of Super, BCAG Board of Supervisors, the 30-day period to gather comments along with the final, uh, was along with this final public hearing. And it was promoted in local newspapers on all transit buses a lot, um, and on the internet, both on both of the agency websites. <clears throat> um, it was also posted uh, on the transit Facebook page. In addition, um, notice was emailed to all community service agencies um, attack, um, the draft unmet met transit needs was sent to you guys, and the assessment examines the transit dependent groups, adequacy of existing transit services, a detailed summary of the public testimony received during the process, and staff analysis of whether the testimony meets the definitions of unmet transit needs and, um, and re are reasonable to meet, if so. Um, if the board determines there are unmet transit needs, then the affected jurisdiction must satisfy their needs again before any funds may be expended for non-transit purposes. <clears throat> Based on the testimony and analysis with the adopted definitions of unmet transit needs and reasonable to meet, the BCAG um, Board of Directors is required to make one of the fi three findings of no unmet transit needs, no unmet transit needs that are reasonable, um, or no unmet transit needs, including needs that are reason, or there are unmet transit needs, including needs that are reasonable to meet. For the 22, uh, 23 fiscal year, which will affect 2324 uh, funding, based on the testimony received and on staff analysis with the adopted definitions of unmet transit needs and reasonable to meet, the BCAC staff is recommending that the following finding be made by the board. There are no unmet transit needs that are reasonable to meet. The recommendation will be presented to the board at the next board meeting, which will be either in January or February. Um, and we request that the at this time that the SS TAC support the staff's recommendation to the board of directors to accept the uh, unmet transit needs assessment for the 23-24 fiscal year and find that there are no unmet transit needs that are reasonable to meet. So with that, um, are there any uh, comments, questions um, about this year's report? We have, we do have Andy here um, who, if I can provide a detail, which Probably not. He might be able to answer any questions that you have as well about current things that are going on. Um, well, yeah, I'll just I'll just add in. I think one of the one of the issues we've been talking about was the non-emergency medical transport, the unmet transit needs process we go through um, every year. We do get a lot of comments throughout the year on routing and things we're doing on the routing or you know, particular issues that some some folks have. 
uh, with the service, both with the fixed route and, and dial a ride. Um, lots of times, I think we've talked in the past that a lot of those, uh, a lot of those comments don't really fall under the unmet needs. They're, they're more of, you know, concerns or, or points of, of contention or issues just with the system in general. So um, those are things that we uh, just continue to address throughout the year as we can. Um, however, one of the things that did come out of this was the non-emergency medical transport. We started talking about that a couple of years ago and um, how we were going to move forward with that. And what we've uh, to date, our, our progress really is that we've, we've gone to our board and designated a consolidated services transit Consolidated Transit Services Agency, which is CTSA, and allows for there to be um, a designation and attachment um, to 5310 funding um, for us to at least you know, find some level of funding to help us put forward the non-emergency medical transport. And the intent is that that would not be, you know, any claims would not be in competition with any of the other sources that 5310 is providing to other agencies. Tara and I talked about this, that we didn't want to put ourselves in a position where, you know, us designating ourselves um, as that agency for the purpose of being able to claim funds would, would jeopardize any of the other organizations that may be using those funds. So um, when we move forward with actually implementing the plan, that's going to be one of the things that we just want to make sure with the 5310 program is, you know, that someone at the 5310 program doesn't say, oh, well, you're already, you know, someone in your county is already getting funds and that's, you know, an issue. It doesn't seem like that should be the case, but um, nonetheless, we're going to want to ask that question when we do move forward with um, trying to establish a service, which right now it looks like we, we do have a, we have a recommended service that we're going to try to um, move forward with. I, I think our date is probably toward the end of this year. Um, we have to go through our budgeting process for fiscal 23, um, 24. And what that will involve is, is really an extension of the existing dial-a-ride service is, is what it means. Um, people would, would be able to call in and, and book a ride just like they would with the paratransit. Um, we are going to operate um, specific routes um, on specific days. So we might have a, um, there is a North and South County um, identified uh, routing that looks like it, it could work. Um, so North County, South County, you know, four or five time frames, you know, in each one of those days, like a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Tuesday, Thursday um, type scenario. Um, and then the other piece of that is being able to, uh, for those folks that want to use the program, you know, how do we how do we book those rides? So that led to us looking into uh, expanding um, our current reservation system and how that works um, in a way that we could uh, be able to book the ride, but also be able to identify it as being a different designation than you know, a paratransit or ADA qualified rider. That's what we would have to do in order to be able to claim reimbursement under the 5310 program. So th those are all kind of the granular details of actually being able to implement the program um, and finding the best use of the existing software that we have and also an extension of that software um, and then being able to <laughs> actually utilize our existing relationship with TransDev, who is, is doing dispatch for the ADA paratransit, utilize them to book those rides. So we're, it's, it's pretty, I think it's a pretty foregone conclusion that we're gonna offer the service. It's just working out the details as how we can do it, put it out there and have it be something that's understood and useful and also has some element of of qualification to that. You know, unfortunately, we're going to have to figure how we can do that as well. So, again, probably something similar to the ADA paratransit process um, that identifies someone as being eligible for a non emergency in any MT ride. Um, I do see that it looks 
just around town once in a while, I, I see a couple of vans um, that are identifying themselves as um, non-emergency transport companies. So they may be that there are, you know, Uber, Lyft type services establishing themselves um, for that purpose. What we did one of the things we did find out is a good portion of our ADA and paratransit was being used for any empty purpose. So I think what we're really looking at is um, expanding an existing system that we have in place, adding the, the nomenclature that says we're also providing any MT, which is likely to increase um, the number of people using let's just call it in general, the ADA paratransit service for medical transport. So I don't know that we're really going to be, you know, it doesn't feel like we're gonna be providing um, something that's of an extreme vacuum because it's already kind of being used for a, a qualified or aged group of people. I think we're just gonna really be expanding our existing service, calling it that we're adding an EMT and that we'll probably be adding folks on to use that service that wouldn't otherwise qualify for ADA or paratransit. So I, I think that's kind of how that's, how that's going to go. It's just a matter of us getting the, the details figured out. So um, we're a little, we're a little low on our staff here. We have two folks out there on maternity leave right now. So um, that's two thirds of our transit staff is out. So uh, we're going to bring this back between February and April and start putting a little more time into it and see if we can get it into our, our budgeting and, and then, roll out the details and get our marketing done and make sure all of, you know, you guys are really our kind of our first contact points um, out to those folks and, and hopefully be able to utilize some level of advertisement or marketing or even just a link, you know, somehow with, with your organizations to say, Hey, there's, this, there's another service. There's another available option for you um, uh, with fixed route and dial ride services. So. Those are really my main updates on that, if anyone has any particular questions. It looks like Mary has a question. Yeah. yeah. I, I was just going to add that, um, especially given um, the state of your staff or, or, or lack thereof right now, um, you know, anything that we can do to help you, um, you know, let us know. I mean, we're, we've been in this for a long time and are really looking forward to, um, having expanded service. So anything you need from us, or at least from me, please don't hesitate to ask. Absolutely. Thank you, Mary. Yeah. Uh, big service. I know you've got a population of people that probably can utilize this service. So thank you. Um, are there any other questions or concerns or um, comments before we uh, take it to a motion to approve uh, the report? Okay, seeing none, I'll go ahead. Sorry, my phone's ringing. Go ahead and ask for a motion to approve. Uh, I, I'll motion to approve if that's acceptable by the group having been that we prepared it. <laughs> um, yeah, usually it comes, I think last time David approved it, David did their initial motion, but um, sorry. Um, uh, does anybody want a second Andy's motion? This is Jack. I can spoke. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. So we, I heard Jay and somebody else. Might have been Tara, but Mary. we'll take Jay's. Okay. Yeah, I can second. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So the, the report is approved as is, and we'll go ahead and take that to the board at our next opportunity. Um, and then we'll go ahead, the process is to, uh, once it's approved with, we'll do a resolution, add that to the report, and then post everything uh, for the community to access. <clears throat> um, so, and then, let's see. Um, next on the agenda is just other transit updates and items. Um, Andy, uh, thank you for um, giving us more detail on the NEMT study and where we're at with that. Um, we are um, 
Victoria and I talked about it too. And we're just, she just said, um, you know, or we just talked about being um, looking in the tech end right now and kind of getting some ideas uh, about tech and internal procedures that would be in, uh, involved with that. Um, we plan definitely on moving forward, as Andy said, that's, a, that's a, our focus on that. Um, as far as the route optimization study goes, um, we uh, are continuing to work um, with the consultants and work on alternatives uh, to the different plans. We've had um, several meetings and um, public meetings as well. And those alternatives have been, are freely available um, to, for public review. Um, as, as it relates to our public hearings on that, um, <clears throat> or workshops, I guess. Um, there would be no, we wanted to let you guys know there would be uh, no changes in paratransit, even if the fixed routes um, are changed, which um, looks like the fixed routes will probably be adjusted on some level. Um, there will be some uh, routing changes in Oroville. Uh, we're just not those aren't defined yet, but um, you can look at the information document and see kind of what some of the alternatives might be for that uh, area. And then um, I think that's it for the route optimization study. Um, and then some other items that we're um, looking or that we're using and looking at. Um, we changed over our mapping bus mapping app. So now it is um, plan my rides run through uh, token transit. And um, so double map will not work anymore. If you have clients that are used to using that, um, we have the links in on our social media, everything's been posted um, on our website. So if you have clients that have um, trouble with switching that over, just have them give us a call. And we can walk them through getting over to that um, map. Uh, plan my ride um, option to get mapping and schedules and stuff um, online. It's um, it's not an app itself, but it's a, a well-designed mobile uh, website. So it looks like an app basically and functions like that. And they can also purchase link through that app to purchase tickets and things like that. So, um, so yeah, double map is no more. Um, and then we just want to really encourage people to um, be using token transit. Um, it's uh, we have a couple agencies that are using portals. So if that's something your agency might be interested, give, you can give us a call and we can see if that would work for your agency to um, get purchase tickets and passes and things like that. Um, they, you just need a phone number, mobile phone to send it to, so that they can tap it on the bus. So um, we can talk more about that if your agencies or contacts are interested. Um, and then, um, so we also want, um, we're trying to use social media more to get out announcements and things like that. We also always have announcements on our web pages, but we are trying to be more active on the social media side. So Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Um, so if you want to um, just encourage your clients and um, people you come in contact with to um, sign up for those with us, um, all the links are on. Um, if you just search search Beeline or Butte County Association of Governments, it'll pop up um, anywhere and you can just follow us. And um, we're really trying to stay on top of announcements and, um, you know, changes and things like that um, with with the social media. And then um, and I think that's about it really that we have going on right now. Um, is, Andy, is there anything else that you might want to add or? Um, no, I don't, I don't think so. I think we're, okay. I think that's about it. Does anybody have any other questions or comments about any new things that they've seen or want to talk I about? Want, yeah, I wanted to ask if we could maybe set up with you a training of 211 staff on the Plan My Ride site. Um, yes. I think we've been using it, but I just think it would be really helpful to do a comprehensive training on that in case there's some tips and tricks that we're not, you know, catching. And then that way we can help educate um, our callers also on using that if they have questions about it. So yeah, yeah, if we could, if we could set that up, just like either via Zoom or, you know, you guys could come over on a day yeah, when you guys we're are all right. there. 
Yeah, yeah. they could just walk over and yeah, that'd be great and do that. Um, and also, I'm interested in the in the portal getting set up on that, so I can okay. talk offline about that. Okay, that sounds great. And then I will just let everyone know, um, as a point of making referrals to two one one, we do uh, we are offering right now a lift ride dispatch. Uh, for individuals, especially if it's any kind of a need related to uh, COVID, so a medical appointment or a vaccination appointment, or but we also are um, expanding it to include, you know, folks who uh, are more vulnerable who might need, um, you know, just getting to the grocery store um, or getting to a community meal or something like that. So, you know, a distribution point where there's um, basic needs being provided. So folks can call 211 um, and depending on their situation and their needs, um, part of what we're able to do right now is dispatch a lift ride for them to get from point A to B and then back. Um, it's focused on at this time Chico, uh, the Chico area and Oroville. Um, are, we're just having a lot of challenges with um, folks that, you know, outside of those areas actually being able to have lift service available for them. Um, there's just not that many drivers in the rural areas. So right now it's limited to Chico and Oroville. Okay, great, thank you. Um, thank you for sharing that. Um, okay, well, unless there's any other comments or questions, um, I think think that wraps up our meeting for this year. Um, but we really do appreciate you guys serving on the SS TAC and uh, we know um, it's an important link to our community and, and as service changes and needs change, it's uh, important to stay in contact with each other. So we, we do appreciate you participating in this, this part of the process. So. All right. I, and unless anybody has anything else, I think I think we're good. Adjourn for the day. Adjourn, and you can thank always you everyone. Keep, yeah, thank you. Just stay safe, me everyone. If you have any questions? Yep. All right. Thank you. Bye.